Okay, so mates, for us to draft our basic bodies, this is what we have our pattern paper, white sheets, it could be brown, whatever you have. So here at the top of the paper, I'm going to mark a border line of half inch. It could be half inch, it could be one inch, but here I marked half inch. Okay, I hope you can see the line, half inch here. And then coming to this side, my left hand side this way, I also marked a border line of half inch. It could be up to one inch, whichever one you choose. It is not mandatory. Okay, it's just to create a border line and a top line. So once I have that, the next thing you're to do from this border line, from this top line that I have here, I'm going to measure the length of the pattern that I need, the length of the bodies that I want, my full measurement. What we are drafting is a full bodies from the top of the body to the hip area. So from this top line, I'm going to measure that I have 25, which is the length of what I am making, the length of my blouse, 25. Okay, so once I have the 25, I'm going to mark it across, which I have already done. Now, for, for me to get the size of the paper I'm going to be working with, I'm going to measure from this part to this part. And what am I going to measure? I'm going to use the widest part of my measurement. The widest part of your measurement could be your bust, it could be your hip. So in this case, I'm going to be making use of the hip circumference that I'm working with. So the hip circumference I'm working with is 40, right? I'm going to divide 40 into 2, and that will give me 20. And now the 20, I'm going to add 2 inches to it, and that will be 22. So from this um, border line here, I'm going to mark 22 down to wherever it stops. Using your own measurements, it could be smaller, it could be bigger. Okay, so you have to determine where you want it to be. If the paper cannot accommodate it, you can add extra paper to what you already have. So from here, I'm measuring the 22 inches, knowing that we know how we came about 22 inches, and I'm going to rule it on a straight line down to where my measurement stops. I hope you are following. I've already ruled this line. I just want to make it thicker. Okay. So we have a box. Now to get this middle line is just to divide this box into two. Divide the box into two. And we have the midpoint, which is this. I hope we are following. So here I have what I need. This part from here, the midpoint here, will serve as the back side of my pattern. And this part will serve as the front part of my pattern. It can be both ways, depending on how you want it to be. So I'm going to start knowing that we have our measurements. I'm going to start from the back side. And then move over to the front in taking our measurements. So it's time for us to get our back length. That is the back waist length. So we're going to measure from this top line. As you mean, we have our measurements already. From this top line for the back, we're going to measure our back waist length. That is neck to waist. And here I have. For myself, 15 3 quarter, okay, 15.75, and at this point too, I will measure 15.75. This measurement is not going to get to the front, it's just going to stop only for the back side. So here I have my waistline, I'm going to mark it. Now at this upper part, from this Remember that every measurement we're going to have is starting from this top line. So from here, 
for my back neck depth i'm going to mark one inch this one inch is more of standard when you want to alter you can choose to alter it to any type of neck depth that you want so for the width of the neck i'm going to mark three inches okay one inch for the depth three inches for the width and i'm going to connect these lines together now when you're marking your back neck or you're um, connecting this point together don't allow the connection to be too deep right don't allow the connection to be too deep so this is what i have for my back neck area now from this line this border line here i'm going to measure my shoulder measurements that is a back shoulder divided by two and what i have here is 7.75 that is um 15 inches right i'm going to be marking 7.5 that is 15 inches altogether all right so once i have my shoulder length shoulder measurements here i'm going to come down by one inch for the back i'm going to come down by one inch and choose to connect it to or use a dotted line for this okay so from this neck point this is my three inches for the neck width i'm going to connect it down to this one inch shoulder drop down that i have there I hope you're following this. I'm being gradual because I want everyone to follow along. So here I have my shoulders. I have my neck measurements. Now the next thing we're going to do is to get the length of our armhole. And our measurement is going to be starting from this one inch drop down. So for me to get the length of my armhole, what I'm going to do is to get my round bust measurement and divide it by six. Whatever it gives me, I'm going to add 1.5 to it. Get your round bust measurement, divide by six. Whatever it gives you, add 1.5 inch to it and you have your armhole depth. So in this case, I'm going to be using eight inches. So from this one inch drop down, I'm marking eight inches. Now at this eight inches, I'm still going to measure my shoulder measurement so that everything will be on the same line. I can now draw and connect this line knowing that they are of the same measurement to avoid error. Okay, so this is what I have and I'm going to connect it this way. So I'll still mark the same thing here to avoid error. So this line can go all the way to the front because the armhole for the front and back are going to be on the same page. Now let's do a little, a little at the front. For the front waistline, we're going to measure from our top line to our waist measurement. Remember what you took on your front waist, waist length. And I'm going to mark here 17 inches. My measurements and yours might not be the same, so here I'm using 17 inches. Remember that this measurement at the front might not always be the same. Most times they are not the same. It's very rare that they are the same, but very likely they might be. So here I have 17 inches for my back waist, for my front waistline. This is the CF center front and this is the cb center back all right to identify waistline and this is the ample um, line okay so just identify it the way you can now working at this top line our neck depth for the front is going to be marked at three inches this is for a basic measurement three inches by three inches remember that whatever you took 
at the back for your neck wreath is what you're going to take for the front. So the depth here we're using 3 inches for it not to choke so much. And for the width we're going to be using the same 3 inches. And here we'll get our curve and connect the lines together. Remember that our measurement is starting from where this line is. So we're going to be connecting this. You can see the way I place the curve and we'll connect it. So from still the same line, we're going to be marking our shoulder measurement, which is 15 inches here. Yours might be different. So wherever it is, our shoulder drop down for the front is going to be marked at 1.5 and not 1 inch. The back is 1 inch. The front is going to be marked at 1.5. This is so the front does not fall backwards. It will help to relax very well on the shoulders. Now we're going to be connecting from our neck point down to the 1.5 inch drop down. So I'm going to connect the lines together. You can see what we have. Our armhole deck for the front and back still remains at the same line. So all we have to do is to bring this down to this line. So now the next approach is to take our horizontal measurement. Okay, before then, we're going to get our bust line measurement. For the front, the bust line measurement is going to be at the front. So from our top line, we're going to get to our apex, which is the nipple point, and here we're going to be using 11 inches. So place your tape on your shoulder and get to where the apex of the bust is. That is where the nipple point of the bust is, and that is where you're going to be marking your bust line. So this bust line is going to stop at the front. It will not extend backwards using the method of pattern drafting. So here we mark our bust line. Now, since we have all of this, we're going to be dividing our bust into four and get the horizontal measurements. We're working with bust of 39 divided by 4, I have 9.75. I will mark that at the armhole line for the front. I will also mark it as my bust line, 9.75. Okay. Now for the weight, I'm going to be dividing my weight circumference into four. We're working with weight of 32 divided by four, and I have eight inches. I'm going to be adding one inch to this weight, weight um, measurement which will serve as my dart intake. That is 8 plus 1, making it 9. Then at the hip line, the hip we're working with is 40. I'm going to be dividing 40 into 4, and that will give me 10. At this part, you can choose to add an inch. I'm going to just add 0 0.25 to it. Just 0.25 to the hip line. You can also decide to add that to the bust area just so it becomes very free or a bit free since this is just um, a basic bodice. We don't want it to be too close to the body. So I'm adding 0.25 to all my measurements. 0.25. 0 0.25 to all my measurements. So I'm going to be connecting those lines together like so. So I'm going to be connecting to those points. I'm going to be connecting to the hip area. So this is what we have for the front. Now I'm going to divide this shoulder uh, you, you, you can divide it into two 
to get the midpoint or you just come up by three inches whichever way this one works well so you can choose to do it like that or raise divide it into into two and mark so at those three inches that i came off i'm going to go in by 0 0.75 you can do half inch depending on i'm not sure if this is going to take all your cross chest measurements but if you take your cross chest measurements and see that it's exceeding then you can reduce it to 0 0.5 but i doubt okay when i say i doubt i really really doubt so we're going to be connecting this line like so i'm actually taking this class very slowly very very slowly and i'm going to be connecting this to this part i'm actually taking it very slowly okay you see the way i connected it so now the next um, thing we're going to be doing is to get our bust span measurement divided by 2. I'll be marking 3.5 here at the bust line, 3.5 at the waist line, and 3.5 at the hip line. So I'm going to connect this on a straight line. Now at the waistline, I'm going to mark half inch on both sides. Half inch on both sides. Remember, I've added this measurement to my waist measurement. And I'm going to be connecting this to the bust point. Or because it's just a basic, we can come down by one inch so that we don't sew it up to that bust point. But if you leave me, I'll just take it down to the first point. Okay, when I have to do any alteration, I'll take it up to the first point and alter it from there. Now, at the hip line, I'm going to mark two inches up from the hip line. And that is where I'm going to be connecting this measurement to this that line or that leg. Connected it, and this is what we have for the front. I hope someone is following. So we are going over to the back. The front is done. We're going over to the back. Now for the back, we want to measure the difference between the back length and the front length. And what I have here is 1.25. So I'm going to be raising this back line up by one point. Two five, and that will serve as my new back length. I mean the hip length for the back. Okay, so I raise it by the difference I have here. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is to divide this armhole line into two. Eight divided by two, I have four inches. And at this four inches, I'm going to be marking my arm, connecting my armhole curve. Now, depending on your across back, okay, depending on your cross back, I'm going to come in by half an inch, and I'll be connecting this to it. So I'll connect it on a straight line. Here yeah, on a straight line. Now, before we connect it over to this place, we need to do um, get our bust measurement on this line. The same thing we did to the front, that's what we're going to be doing to the back. 39 for our bust divided by 4 plus 0 0.5. I mean 0 0.25, sorry. And this is where I'm going to be marking it. Right? Now, for the waistline here, you can choose to connect this. I'm using this to connect to this part. This one works very well. Okay, so I'm connecting this to here. Now, for my back um, 
width i'm going to go in from this cb line i'm going to create my slanted cb by going in um, 0.75 this will help to eliminate any kind of bulge like those zipper bulge that we have at the back of your dress this 0.75 here will help to eliminate it so our measurement is going to begin after the 0.75 down so i'm going to connect it to the midpoint of this line can see this is where i've connected it so i'm going to take my back measurement from this line and no longer from this line so my back measurement still remains width divided by four and i have eight and i'm going to be adding one inch for um that intake okay then for my fifth line i'm going to be dividing by four plus 0.25 that I added for the ease. Now, notice that this ease is not compulsory. It is not compulsory to have the ease. You can decide to use all your measurements the way it is. I just, I just decided to add this. So you can just decide to use your normal measurement. So for the back, that line i'm going to use the same thing i used at the front but my measurement is going to be starting from the slanted cb this slant here is known as the slanted cb so my bust span is 3.5 and i'm marking it here i'm going to take half inch on both sides which is the amount of that that i added to this pattern right so this 3.5, I'm going to measure it from the beginning of this line so that I can mark the same thing at this point and at the hip line. Here I have 4.25, so I'm going to be marking the same thing here. And I'm going to mark it at the hip line too. And I'll be connecting it on a straight line. I hope you're following this simplified illustration. Now, I'm not going to connect this exactly to this point. I'll have to come down by one inch. This is just for a basic pattern. When you're doing your illustration, you can choose to do whatever you want to do and sew your dart the way you want. So at this point, um, I may not have to get to the down. I may just come up by one inch and connect the dot. I hope this is explanatory enough. Just one more thing that is remaining, and that is to create the bust. Um, that now for us to create the bust that we're still going to measure the difference between the back and the front length and what i have is 1.25 so from my bust line i'm going to come down by 1.25 from the bust line come down by 1.25 and connect it to this place so i'm going to connect from this bust point to this place Now, when you're sewing this, you don't have to sew exactly to this bust point. You'll still have to shift your hand the way I shifted for the waist that. Okay? All you have to do is to shift in one inch here and connect it from this place to where the measurement is. Okay? Um, let me not connect it. You can do that by yourself or you can just um, do it at once. So it doesn't get to the post part. All right. So I know how you know how we came about this. Um, I just want to clean it so that it's not be looking confusing to anyone who would see the picture. 
this is so we don't sew exactly to the bust point using those basic measurements of basic pattern. If we are going to be doing alteration like green fish, that whatever, whatever, I will take everything to the bust point and then alter from there. That will be it. But for basic, this is just where we are going to be doing it. So I believe you've learned something from this video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section and we'll call it today. Until I come your way next time.